pepped up. Okay? It's what it is. It's like a, like a religious pep rally is what it is. Okay? But anyway, this, uh, this Danzig, uh, this is a rock group, and I kind of looked at some of their albums. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, features Baphomet. There's our buddy Baphomet. He, he just, this guy happens, to, he's looking at Baphomet, and Baphomet is holding up three fingers, and this guy kills three people in the movie, including himself. <laughs> okay. Uh, it could be. Uh, Jared Loftner, you remember him? The uh, Tucson, Arizona shooter that shot the congressman and a bunch of other people, including a, a young girl. Filled his mind with this kind of music. Okay? There was a young man in our community just committed suicide. Okay? I talked to one of his friends. Filled his mind with music. Okay? Music. Not Beethoven, not Bach, not Handel's Messiah. I don't know what he listened to, but I almost bet you it was stuff like this. Okay? And here's, here's Baphomet flashing his sign to this young man. Okay? I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know exactly what it's all about. But it's interesting. And I, I kind of heard this group Danzig before. Uh, and I can tell you that rock and roll is still the devil's music. Here is, here is uh, one of their albums. It's their sixth album. It's called Danzig Six. 66. You see the 666 is on the right hand side there. And their album is called Satan's Child. Read Acts chapter 13, the, the son of Belial. Uh, here is Danzig 2, their album called Lucifuge. They have the image of the skull inside the cross. Remember what we've taught about that, the skull and the crossbones. The cross or the crossbones is an emblem of your DNA. It's an emblem of your X chromosomes. The skull is an emblem of the Antichrist. Okay, that he's pierced in the skull. He has a deadly wound and all this stuff. The skull is an emblem of a deadly of the Antichrist because right now he's dead, but he's awaiting resurrection out of the crossbones. Okay, that's what the pentagram is all about. Uh, here's this album, Lucifuge. Here's another one called I Luciferi. And it's the album number 777. They actually got that number from, there's our, there's our buddy Aleister Crowley. Okay? Okay, this is him. Why is he doing this? Okay, number one, he is showing you opposites here. Okay, this hand and this hand are polar opposites, but they're fused together, okay, like this. They're fused together under the sign of the all see there's that all seeing eye again. Looky there. And the and the little triangle and he's got a little pentagram book. Anyway, Crowley, who has influenced most of current Western culture. Okay, most of it was influenced by Crowley. Wrote a book called Lieber 777. I made some notes the other day on this number 7. I, I don't know when I'm going to come out with some new ideas on this, but I, I think you'll like it. Where there's, Remember, the beast has seven heads, dragon has seven heads, uh, and, and there's seven kings and all this stuff, and I want you to think about that. Uh, there's our buddy Baphomet. Uh, just very quickly, the hands raised up and the hands raised down uh, show as above, so below. The fingers on the, on the right hand, there's two down and three up. That's the number 23. And on the left hand, there's two up and three down. That's the number 23. That's 46. That's your chromosomes. Okay. Remember that Lucifer speaks 46 words to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Okay, he's tarting in her DNA. And he has the symbol of the entwined snakes there. That's DNA as well. The three horns on his head, the pentagram, the wings. And oh, by the way, he's a beast. He's a goat. Okay? Um, and I'm going to say this. Okay? Now, and I've said this before. And I, and I try to be honest with people because, I mean, I believe in morality and I believe in righteousness. And I try to practice it as much as humanly possible. But I'll be honest with you. There is some rock and roll music that... If I was not saved, I would, be, I would be deep into it, okay? I would be deep into it. So it's not about, well, I just kind of like this kind of music. That's not what this is about, okay? I do like classical music too, by the way, okay? Um, but that's not what it's about. It's about what's dangerous and what's not. It's about whose side you're going to be on. I want you to remember something. In Ezekiel chapter 37, the Bible says that the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Speaking of Lucifer, the, the anointed cherub that, that covereth, that fell from heaven. Okay? He was a musician and he knows music. Okay? You never see 
You never see people who play hopscotch out worshiping Lucifer, okay, and promoting Luciferianism. You don't see that. You don't see people, uh, you know, playing Monopoly, uh, joining a satanic cult. Maybe that happens. I don't know. But with rock and roll music, it is the devil's music, okay? When it's when when you fill your mind with this kind of junk, you got to be careful. There's a judgment coming, and I'm not sitting on the throne. I, I'm not worthy. I wouldn't dare. I would not dare. But there is a judgment coming by one who has the right to judge. His name is Jesus Christ, okay? And I can tell you this. I can tell you this with a straight face, and I can tell you this from the Scripture. Jesus does not listen to rock and roll music, and Jesus does not rock, okay? I'm, I, I hate that expression. I've seen it for years. Yeah, Jesus rocks, man! Okay? Just be careful what you're saying. Matthew chapter 25 verse 31. There's a judgment. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Notice, His sheep from the goats. Notice the difference. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. We did a pure Bible study uh, last week about that. But the goats on the left. Uh, go study the right hand in the scriptures. And then Matthew chapter 25. Look what he says to the goats. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Depart from me ye cursed. They're not blessed. They're cursed. Okay. Into everlasting fire. So, and let me, let me just break this down. Number one, they're cursed, okay? Blessing and cursing are words to denote save the, the, someone who is saved and someone who is lost. And, and I, listen, I, I'm not trying to be mean about it, and I want to be, be a blessing to you. I really do. I want to be a blessing and give you the truth, okay? If you are saved and you are born again, and you, are, you have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and have the new nature and been filled with the Holy Ghost through the pages of the, of the incorruptible Word of God. You have the incorruptible seed uh, growing inside of you. You are not cursed. Don't let anybody tell you that as a born-again Christian, someone can place a curse on you or that you are cursed because your granddaddy was a Freemason or he was a pedophile or anything like that. Do not believe that stuff. Okay? If you are blessed, you are not cursed. They're different. Okay? You cannot, you cannot be both at the same time. You cannot be. Okay? And so whereas the sheep are blessed of the Father. Okay? Here we have the goats who are cursed. And where are they placed? In their everlasting fire. Now, there's a guy running around with a website called Amazing Facts. His name is Doug Batchelor. He goes around. I've, I've, been, I've known about his, his little deal here for a while. And uh, somebody hey, said, Pastor Mike, what do you think about this guy? And I, I just want to say this to you. This guy is a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's running around the country with all these, he calls it Amazing Facts. He does all this little thing about how everybody in Christianity is wrong on their belief on hell. Okay? And he says, it's not forever. That's stupid. Don't believe that. It's not burning. It's not this and it's not that. And, you don't, and it's almost like you don't have to worry about it. Here the Bible says it's everlasting fire. Not only is the Bible saying this, this is Jesus saying this. It is everlasting fire and it's prepared for the devil and his angels. When you look at that image of Baphomet, that's who that is. Notice the wings. Here we have the devil here, the goat. Okay, he is his. This place is prepared for the devil and his angels. But then he's not done. In verse, here we go, verse forty-six. The Bible says, "These shall go away." And I want you to notice the words here: everlasting punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. Now, anybody who will tell you, "Oh, don't, hell's not forever," and it's not. It's not like you're going to know you're there. Okay, come on. You know, now the original Greek says, and the original Hebrew kind of gives you the idea, and really the translators got it wrong. When they start giving you that stuff, walk away. Walk away. Because Jesus plainly said that it was everlasting fire and that it was everlasting punishment. It's a spanking. 
worse than that that keeps going and going and going and it never stops and I, I've had a few of those spankings as a child where I wanted my mom to stop and she didn't stop okay anyway don't listen to the devil's music okay that's that's Baphomet don't listen to that stuff get it get it out get it out of your life you don't need it you don't need it okay um, you don't just need to be pumping your mind full of music. I'd say music of any kind all the time. Now, there's good music, and I agree with that, and I like to listen to it. But you don't need rock and roll music. You don't need it in your life. You don't need it in your car. You know what it does? It, it, it fulfills a desire of your flesh. Get away from it. Okay? Don't be a goat. And then, one of our watchers. Man, I thank God for you watchers. You guys help me out, all right? Uh, sent me this. Okay, the, uh, there's protests going on all over the country. Okay, uh, looks like grassroots. Okay, or at least people that are real dirty. These are like a new generation of hippies. They're wannabes, is what they want to be, and uh, they're, they're. It's called the Occupy Wall Street, and they're 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 protesting corporate greed, and they're protest protesting profits, and they're protesting. And I saw a video of a meeting of these people, and I'm going to tell you what the community they just stank of communism. And here was a, a, an upstanding senator, representative, uh, who was going to speak at the rally. Okay? Um, it's nothing but a, a bunch of Marxist, socialist, communist garbage going on in these cities, and they're protesting Wall Street. Down with capitalism! Down with profits! Down with this! Down with that! You know, that, yeah, that kind of sounds good, because you know, like, these oil companies, they make billions and billions of dollars. And the Monsanto Corporation, and all of these other companies, and Walmart, I mean, they are, and Lehman Brothers, and, um, and uh, all these banking institutions, they are making a killing right now. And you say, yeah, man, stick it to them. I'm for that stuff, okay? They shouldn't be allowed to make money. Where does it stop, okay? But anyway, let me show you what's, what's on the other side of this. You see, the protests were not as grassroots as what everybody was led to believe. There was an article that came out uh, that somebody done some investigation. There were some of these, these liberal socialist organizations that were, <laughs> this is funny, they were hiring people to go and protest Capitalism. Okay? So, in other words, greed is bad. Oh, no, and we need you to voice your opinion and we'll pay you well. 650 bucks a week. We'll pay you to go and protest Wall Street and capitalism. Okay? It's not about, it's not about greed. It, well, it is about greed. It's not about being fair. It's not about raising poor people up. It's not about helping your fellow man. This was, it's not about this at all. Baphomet represents transformation. Salve here. Let's dissolve the old institution and coagula here. Let's recoagulate it. Let's build it back together again. That's what that's what everything that's going on is all about. Okay? So this uh, protest Wall Street thing, okay? It has a purpose. It ha it serves a function. Just like the economic crisis is going on all around the world, they serve a purpose. We have to tear down the old banking structures so we can rebuild a new one in its place that favors a very, 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 very teeny tiny few people. Okay, and it's about me. It's about these people making more money. Okay, and let's think about this. Let's say that you have a hundred dollars to spend. Okay, and you go you go downtown, and you have two you have two vendors. Okay, and um, you spend twenty dollars with this vendor, and you spend twenty dollars with that vendor. Okay, now you have uh, sixty dollars left. This vendor knows that you've got more money. And he knows that there's a chance that this vendor over here is going to get some of that money. And so he's going to do whatever he can to make sure that when you pull that money out of your wallet, it goes to him and not to him. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So this guy lobbies Congress. This guy uh, passes laws. This guy uh, does everything to try to destroy this guy over here so that the only place for you to spend your money is right here. That's communism, by the way. Okay? That's, com that's what it is. And so you go to uh, somebody, the Occupy Wall Street 